All right, Matt. So Chelsea Dortmund. Where was this game taking place? It was at Soldier Fields nice. in Chicago, or, oh. or Sandy Field, or Potato Field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, not a good playing surface. Yeah, at all. which is uh, one of your your preseason cliches to, uh, checklist, isn't it? Yeah, but how bad was it? Because uh, Christopher Nkunku certainly picked up some sort of knee injury. Yeah, you? I'm not sure whether that was due to the pitch. It was um, in a collision with with Maya, the, the Dortmund keeper, um, oh. and he seemed to jar his knee. But I mean, I don't want to say whether it's serious or not. But it was one of those where right preseason, let's just get him off straight away. But he was he was walking, you know, without the aid of crutches at the end of the game. So I guess that's a good thing. But the you know, the problems that Chelsea have had with knee injuries, uh, it is cause for concern, and, and particularly because Nkunku's been really impressive in pre-season, and he's played pretty much everywhere across the front line and looked really effective wherever he's been. So it would be a shame if he wasn't able to start the season. Although, having said that, Mikhailo Mudrik came on hmm. in his place and was excellent, and he's another who's looked much, much better in pre-season. When you say in, in his place, what position has he been playing? Uh, so he was left of the three who were behind Nicholas Jackson, who's okay. been one of the other big revelations. Of, of pre-season for Chelsea which has gone certainly on the pitch swimmingly you'd have to say Right mm. last season they were very much shenanigans FC what mm. kind of campaign are you anticipating this time? Much much better uh, it's, a, it's a big leap to go from 12th to top 4 but I think the fact they don't have any European football puts them in a great position to do that if they can get Caicedo or another holding midfielder which um, they definitely need uh, I'm really excited by Jackson he, he looks Superb. I don't know whether he's just continuing that ludicrous hot streak that he went on last season, but his hold-up play is sensational. He's strong, he's quick, he can finish. Uh, so that could be the player that Chelsea have really been crying out for. And, and then you've got people like Ian Matson, you know, who's got in the championship team of the season last season. Great, as left-back. He hasn't played a minute at left-back for Chelsea in pre-season. He's been playing in midfield. He's looked excellent as well. Uh, and Levi Colwell, superb alongside Thiago Silva uh, in the game against Dortmund and having just signed a new contract so things are looking pretty rosy and and you're already seeing a, a kind of Pochettino shape to the team totally yeah 4-2-3-1 uh, they went to 3-4-3 uh, three, three for the second half against Wrexham but other than that it's pretty much been 4-2-3-1 the whole way through and, and that is a massive benefit certainly to those who were there last season who didn't know what they were doing for most most of the time under under Graham Potter and then Frank Lampard, but yeah, Pochettino's a, a serious manager, isn't he? And mm. obviously, um, Chelsea seem to want Caicedo to to partner with Enzo Fernandez. Do you think we're going to see much of Andre Santos and and Cesare Casade because they are obviously very promising players in that position? Um, yeah, do, we, do you think they're going to get some minutes? I think Santos is more likely to than Cassidy. I think Cassidy has been strongly linked with a loan to Leicester. Uh, he was at Reading for the for the back end of last season. He's he's got all the tools, Cassidy. Obviously, brilliant for Italy at the, at the um, Under Twenty World Cup this summer, but maybe not quite ready for the Premier League. But yeah, Santos, and he's played a lot of football already, mm. hasn't he? For a, for a nineteen year old, I think they really like the look of him. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him kept around, maybe as backup to to Enzo plus one other because they are short in that area right Chelsea um, you're very much in your soothing <laughs> middle of the night whisper yeah. mode Matt. it's very pleasant uh, sorry yeah, Chelsea in for Moses Casado still and also bidding for Robert Sanchez the keeper uh, FPL banger podcast amusing ironically surely Burley could have saved some cash if he had just bought Brighton outright so yes. very true. If they get those two, Casado and Sanchez, that would make Andy Naylor points out ten Brighton employees that Chelsea have picked up in less than a year. Yeah, quite a few of them are still there as well, uh, behind the scenes on on the staff. Um, the Sanchez one is interesting, isn't it? Because obviously Deserby didn't fancy him at all. Uh, Chelsea kind of had two first choice keepers last season with with Mendy as well. Sanchez will, will very obviously be the number two. I think, which means that you know, Kepa again goes in as the first choice. You think mm. how long it's looked as though he's been on the way out, but he's looked decent in pre-season. But yeah, Sanchez, fine as a backup keeper. Other than that, you've got Marcus Bettinelli or, or some youngsters. So if you can get somebody with Premier League experience, that's fine. But again, Chelsea haven't got many games this season. They're not in Europe. So mm. Kepa's going to play the vast majority of them unless they go deep in the Cups and they drew Man City away in both domestic Cups in the first round they played in last season. So wow. maybe not if that happens again. Hello there. If you've enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to this channel? 
The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views, we've got stats, we've got analysis, we've got some of the best football writers around, and the whole thing is absolutely free. So have a listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below.